Imagine a paradise lost to time, an island of elegance, revelry, and serene beaches, all erased from the map overnight. This is the tale of Isle Darnier, Last Island, a luxurious oasis in the 1850s, an island that looked like it belonged in the Caribbean more than off the coast of Louisiana, where the southern elite's laughter intertwined with the whispers of the ocean breeze, unknowingly poised on the brink of catastrophe. In this episode, we plunge into exploring the lives of those who face nature's fury and emerged with tales of both sorrow, hope, and love. Il Dernier, or The Last Island, was a 25-mile-long, half-mile-wide utopia less than 50 miles off the Louisiana coast in the 1850s. Known for its lavish lifestyle, it was paradise for the affluent, a blissful escape for the southern high class. Where families enjoyed the sea air, attended balls, and participated in leisurely activities. Though women took great care to avoid a tan as pale, blemish-free skin was in vogue. When families were done with their day's plans, they would retire to the Mugas Hotel, the boarding house, or one of several private homes in Last Island Village. However, on August 7, 1856, an unforeseen storm brewed in the Gulf. The technology of the time was incapable of predicting the looming disaster, leaving the joyous vacationers oblivious to the danger. It was the morning of August 8th when the island awoke to rattling winds and monstrous waves, yet many perceived these anomalies as non-threatening. Even amidst the gathering storm, the parties and merriments continued. One tourist writing about the waves spoke of how the waves stood in walls of solid water before crashing back down. Michael Solter, a ship captain well versed in deciding what is dangerous behavior for water, saw these waves as peculiar but non-threatening. Captain Thomas H. Ellis decided against an early evacuation choosing instead to allow the guests to attend their scheduled ball. The island, consumed in festivities, remained unaware of the rapidly intensifying hurricane that was about to alter their lives. As the ladies, Captain Ellis was so worried to disappoint, danced with their husbands and suitors to a live band playing over the swirling winds. The ship, the Nautilus, a steamship that shuttled passengers to and from the island, was caught by gales that threatened to capsize the vessel only a few miles away from the island. Despite these warnings, vacationers remained oblivious to the developing hurricane barreling towards them. They would soon realize the weight of the situation. The morning after the ball, Captain Ellis made his morning departure from Isle de Marnier to bring his passengers to Brashear City. But when the ship reached Caillou Bay, the wind and the waves grew hazardous. The star wasn't made to cut through such unsteady conditions, and soon the deck was filled with water. The steamer was due back at the resort that evening. By Saturday, August night, the winds were 80 miles an hour, the strength of a Category 1 hurricane. The star was still missing. The storm's intensity grew quickly. By the time it made landfall on August 10th, it had reached Category 4 classification. The highest point on the island rose to a mere 5 feet above sea level and the rising gulf easily overtook the island. Terror seized vacationers and resort employees as it dawned on them they were trapped on the island in the middle of a hurricane. They migrated to higher structures to escape the flooding as they waited for the star to arrive. Soon after they saw their salvation, plumes of black smoke were visible on the horizon. The steamboat had arrived to take them back home. Just as their hope was restored, it was crushed as they watched the storm slam the steamer into the reeds and tangled grasses near the port. There would be no sailing to safety. Some families sought refuge in the Muggas Hotel, which boasted to be the sturdiest building on the island. Others stayed in their private homes, but one by one, the houses toppled on the island. All homes were completely decimated. Even the hotel fought a losing battle with the hurricane. The wrecked star offered some protection at the very least. As the island was submerged in the water and all buildings were destroyed, the people sought refuge in the star as it was the only enclosed and protected space left. This was the only reason why there were many survivors as there were. Within this chaos, the story of Emma Millie stands out. Emma was the only surviving member of her family. 
experienced the full brunt of the catastrophe. After being severely injured by flying debris, she witnessed the horrifying fate of her sister-in-law, Althi, and her infant that was washed out to sea. As other cottage occupants fled to the big hotel, the Millies stayed put because the baby was sick. That afternoon, crowded together in one room, they felt the house shake, then the waves crashed in. Emma saw her sister-in-law sweep past her. She was clutching her baby in her arms. They, along with Emma's parents and brother, all drowned. Only Emma survived, bleeding and likely in shock. Emma managed to cling to a log. She was one of the few who had drifted back ashore after being washed out into the Gulf. Meanwhile, another vacationer, Dr. Alfred Dupier, fled the hotel when the hurricane hit and dashed into a cottage, where he tied himself to an armoire. The next morning, he awoken to find himself on the beach looking at the ruins of the hotel. On one of the calmer days following the storm, Richard, a free man and servant to Thomas Milley, searched for the living. He found Emma surrounded by corpses on the beach. Emma was taken to the safety of the star where she was treated by Dr. Alfred Dupier. The island had been raised. Instead of being one continuous landmass, it was now segmented into two. Survivors found their dead friends, family members, as they combed the island for those who were missing. Some believe the corpse showed signs of the presence of pirates, money stolen from pockets, jewelry snatched from women, knife wounds on the bodies. They thought the pirates had taken advantage of the disorganized state of a resort for the wealthy in the days following the hurricane. More likely, this was due to injuries caused by the storm. The steamboat Major FX Aubrey collected the first round of 100 survivors on, on Wednesday, August 14th, and set out for the mainland, where passengers took railroads or another ship to get back home. On the 19th, the steamboat Texas journeyed to Last Island to collect a second round of survivors. Emma Millie, now an orphan, was carried by Dr. Dupier in a chair off the star and onto the Texas. She was too weak to walk. The two had grown fond of each other in their time hiding out on the star. Emma's fight for survival and Dr. Dupier's relentless care created a bond between them. She would accompany Dr. Dupier to his mother's home until she was well enough to return to her own family's empty home. Before she left, Dr. Dupier gave Emma a book of religious poems. Inside was a note as divine providence saved us miraculously, it must be that we were destined for each other. He proposed to her two weeks later, soon after they were married. Emma's journey is a testament to human resilience and the strength of the human spirit amidst loss and devastation. The tragedy of Last Island stands as a poignant reminder of the impermanence of our surroundings and the unrelenting force of nature. The story of Emma and Dr. Dupier resonate as a beacon of hope symbol of enduring love or immense devastation. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. If you found this story intriguing, like, share, and subscribe for more such captivating tales. Until next time, goodbye.